Essential Woman, B-I-O-P-H-O-B-I-A and the Study of Sex Differences. At the heart of gender schema theory lie stereotypes. Initially crude and concrete boys like trucks, girls like dolls they become increasingly abstract and metaphorical with increasing age men are more competitive, women more cooperative. We construct them from bits and pieces of observation, from the media, from watching others, from gossip and myths. And it is stereotypes that form the foundation for another explanation of sex differences, social role theory. According to this formulation, the division of labor in society, rather than the child's natural tendency to form categories, is the starting point for sex differences. Men occupy roles that require competitiveness, autonomy, and aggression. Women occupy roles that require nurturance, caring, and cooperation. THSA roles draw out of their occupants the commensurate qualities and skills. THSA in turn set up stereotypes that embody beliefs about the appropriateness of expected characteristics. Expectancy con firming behavior should be especially common when expectancies are broadly shared in a society, as is the case for the expectancies about women and men, eagerly, 1987, p. 15. THSA expectancies are internalized psychologically, resulting in sex differences in both behavior and self-perception. During the last years of the 20th century, there was a significant change in the nature of women's labor as they moved into many arenas traditionally occupied by men. We might therefore expect to see a shift in both stereotypes and self-perceptions by men and women. No such shift occurred, Helmreich, Spence, and Gibson, 1982, Lewin and Tragos, 1987, Luptow, 1985. Furthermore, we would expect to see a fair degree of cultural specify city with, traditional, societies showing more marked stereotypes than more egalitarian ones. We do not, Williams and Best, 1982. Social role theory supposes that sex differences follow stereotypes and hence that stereotypes should be more extreme and polarized than actual sex differences. THEY are not, SWIM, 1994. We are left with the alternative suggestion that stereotypes are reasonably accurate assessments of the typical differences between men and women and that, rather than stereotypes causing sex differences, the reverse is the case. If this is true then we at least have a means of explaining the typical division of labor between the sexes women prefer to spend more time than men do in parenting activities which social role theory could not do. Indeed its authors recognize that they must find a way to explain the origins of the sexual division of labor which, after all, formed the hinge pin of their whole theory. But there was a problem. In all cultures women assume the major burden of childcare while men, but rarely women, engage in warfare and violence. The most obvious candidate for explaining such human universals is evolutionary psychology, but this was not a route that appealed to Wood and Eagley 2002. Th. Iyer radical solution was to divorce the mind from the body. The essential woman, B-I-O-P-H-O-B-I-A and the study of sex differences. 9. And allow evolution to work only on the latter. Our biosocial model does not assume that any sexual selection pressures that contributed to physical dimorphism between the sexes are major INFLUences on sex typed psychological attributes. P. 702. THEY acknowledge that men have greater size, upper body strength, and speed, this fight ts them perfectly for their social role in aggression and warfare. Women are capable of giving birth and lactating, this makes them good candidates for their social role as mothers. But the argument that bodily differences gave rise to the sexual division of labor begged some obvious questions. Where did these morphological differences come from? If they were not created by evolutionary sexual selection pressures, what caused them? And why do we share these physical dimorphisms with so many other species? Addressing these physical sex differences inevitably plunged Wood and Eagley into recognition of hormonal FECTS. THEY accepted not only that testosterone fosters muscle development, but also that it rises and falls in men in response to competition in order to direct men's physical and cognitive performance. How did such a useful hormonal adjustment occur, if not through evolution? But if that were true, then would and eagerly would have to accept that competition was of central importance to male reproductive success and that selection had therefore acted on the male brain as well as male muscle. Perhaps more importantly, how does their acknowledgement of the psychological impact of testosterone square with their argument that evolution has had no FECT on, sex-typed psychological attributes? Endocrinologists have known for many years that testosterone, aromatized to estrogen, crosses the blood-brain barrier. THI or neat disjunction between body and brain is not one that hormones or biological evolution respects.
With the bio side of their biosocial model addressed, the authors turned their attention to the argument concerning its social dimension. Sex differences vary in magnitude across cultures. TH's results, they proposed, from differences in local ecology and technology which AFFECT social role demands enhance the rigidity or plasticity of the sexual division of labor. Evolutionary theory, as it is caricatured by Wood and Eagley, stipulates that men but not women provide food. Why then, they ask, does the contribution of women and men to subsistence vary across cultures? Evolutionary theory predicts and data confirm that mothers everywhere spend more time with children than fathers, but why then, they ask, does the proportion of childcare contributed by men vary? THIR conclusion, evolutionary theory must be wrong. But this rests on a profound misunderstanding of evolution and facultative adjustment. Evolution depends on the degree of phi t between the organism and the environment. Because ecologies vary, so must the characteristics that are best suited to it. Evolution has built the ability to adjust, creating a kind of inherited intelligence. In plants, hardly. 10. The Essential Woman, BIOPHOBIA and the Study of Sex Differences. Noted for their sophisticated cognitive abilities, phototaxis causes them to orient toward the source of sunlight. In some species of teleost physis, the prevailing sex ratio causes some individuals to change sex. When we consider humans, with their unique ability to envisage hypothetical futures and to solve problems, the potential for a FLXable response to the environment magnifies considerably. But I am getting ahead of myself. Nobody can seriously doubt that environmental factors modify the expression of sex differences. The problem with socialization theories is that they ask the environment to do all of the work. They fail to recognize that the environment is acting on an evolved organ, the mind. Of course, forces such as reinforcement, imitation, cognitive schema, and conformity all modulate our actions. The pleasure of social approval, the ability to learn through observation, our internal representations, and the desire to be like others, these are part of human psychology everywhere. The question is whether these processes alone can explain the origins of the cross-cultural differences between male and female. Altering reinforcement contingencies for sex-typical behavior can temporarily change it. Boys and girls will show cross-sex play where the environment is manipulated to encourage it and social approval is contingent on it. But when that intervention is removed, children revert to the same sex preference that characterizes children everywhere. Serbin, Tonic, and Strangons, 1977, Theokas, Ramsey, and Sweeney, 1993. Demeanor and language that used to be frowned on in young women as masculine is now unremarkable. But there is no link between girls' cultural approval of these new female behaviors and their level of aggression. Munzer, Campbell, Jervis, and Lewis, 2001 We have as yet seen no change in the universal tendency for men to be more violent than women. As new opportunities open to women, they eagerly accept them. Women's entry into hitherto masculine areas of achievement such as science, engineering, and entrepreneurship has been remarkable. Yet still, for the majority of women, occupational choice rests as heavily on the social as on the financial rewards and on the extent to which their work can be effectively combined with motherhood. Brown, 1995, Sissi, Williams, and Barnett, 2009, Geary, 1998. Where we can open up new opportunities for women's self-expression, enjoyment, and achievement we should do it because it is morally right. But that is very different from saying that gender has no biological basis and that the nature of men and women is wholly constructed by society. The problem with such a position is that it fails to address the issue of why sex differences take the particular form that they do. If gender differences are arbitrary, it is a curious coincidence that they follow such a similar pattern around the world. Even if sex differences were driven by differential parental treatment, we would still want to ask why a trait is considered more desirable for one. Evolutionary Psychology 11. Sex than another. If they were driven by selective imitation, we would still want to ask why children might show a preferential and untutored interest in the behavior of their own sex. If driven by gender schema, we would need to ask why sex specify C conformity is so attractive to children. If driven by the division of labor, we still need to explain the preference of men and women for different social and occupational roles. Social constructionist and environmental theories explain the transmission of the gendered status quo, but without asking where it came from. Evolutionary psychology. Evolutionary theory addresses this very question. And the Darwinian algorithm is so elegant that it can be stated in 5A words, 
random genetic variation, non-random selection. Evolutionary psychology is the application of evolutionary principles to the study of the evolution of mind to be in cosmides. 1992. Natural and sexual selection pressures which shaped species typical aspects of our anatomy bipedalism, cranial capacity, gestation length are assumed to have orchestrated the architecture of the human mind which in turn drives behavior. Evolutionary psychology holds that psychological attributes that conferred signify can't benefit T.S. in terms of survival and reproduction upon their bearer relative to others who did not possess such attributes are present today in the form of evolved adaptations designed to solve such specify C ancestral problems as enhancing paternal certainty Wilson and Daly, 1992 Optimizing Mate Selection Bus, 1989 At Speedily Acquiring Language Pinker 1994 Comprehending the Mental State of Others Baron Cohen, 1997 And Weighting the Costs of Risky Encounters Campbell, 1999 The distinguishing features of evolutionary psychology are fourfold. First, it is ultimately concerned with mechanisms of mind and not simply behavior. TH distinguishes it from sociobiology in which comparisons are made between animal and human behaviors and implications are drawn about a common evolutionary pathway or about convergent evolution between species under similar selection pressures. Primate behavior is often described and discussed by evolutionary psychologists, and I will be doing this too, because many human adaptations are shared with other species and emerged prior to human speciation fully, 1996. Such behavioral comparisons are a starting point for attempting to locate the mental mechanisms which produce it. To do this, we need to ask questions about function, what does this behavior achieve? And to answer this we need a description of the circumstances under which the behavior appears and whether or not it solves an adaptive problem. But evolutionary psychology also asks about the relevant inputs to the mental device and the range of outputs. 12. The Essential Woman B-I-O-P-H-O-B-I-A and the study of sex differences. That can appear. TH is as important in understanding FLX ability of action, how the life stage and competencies of the organism, together with perception of the past and current environment, AFFECT the strategy that is implemented. THE same mechanisms can give rise to different manifest behaviors. Competition for resources, for example, can lead to combat, the formation of advantageous alliances, or dispersion to new ecological niches. THE's same mechanism can produce different manifest behaviors given different inputs. Babies raised in China speak a different language from infants raised in England but that does not invalidate the existence of a universal mental device for acquiring the language heard in the local community. We are searching for the deep structure not only of language but of other universal human abilities including kin recognition, mate selection, and sexual jealousy despite the fact that their behavioral expression may vary. Second, evolutionary psychology conceives of the mind as an adapted organ. Some have likened it to a Swiss army knife, equipped with many specify C modules, each geared to the speedy and seemingly effortless processing and resolving of problems to be in Cosmides, 1992. TH's view assumes that the environment of adaptation presented similar classes of problem again and again, resulting in selection of those specify C mental abilities that were advantageous in solving them. The presence of a predator produces activity in the fear center of the amygdala at a pre-conscious level that triggers alertness and evasion even before we have consciously registered exactly what the threat is. The path to the sensory cortex is slower and more roundabout than the direct pathway to the amygdala. Fast approaching objects on a collision course with us were a sufficient danger in our evolutionary past that infants today will fall backward when an object is made to loom by simply increasing its size on a screen in front of them. TH's reflex X was sufficiently useful as an adaptation that it is now hardwired. THE mind is a collection of modules that reliably develop in a wide range of environments. Some are simple reflex X's, but many more are not. Humans have a tendency to commit various cognitive, errors that have been successful rules of thumb in our evolutionary past. One is the availability heuristic, we judge the likelihood of events in terms of the ease with which we can recall instances of their occurrence. When asked whether accidents or cardiovascular disease accounts for more deaths in the United States, most people reply that accidents do. In fact, accidents account for 5% of deaths annually compared to 50% from heart attacks and strokes. Accidents are more vivid and memorable and their prominence in our memory misleads as Tversky and Kahneman, 1974. In ancestral communities, only about half of infants survived to adulthood and many of these deaths would have been traumatic. The ability to attend to and recall such lethal threats and consequently to
Evolutionary Psychology 13. Overestimate their frequency had advantages. For evolutionary psychologists, many human psychological abilities controversially, some would say all are hardwired and encapsulated mental modules, theory of mind, spatial orientation, numeracy, kin detection, face recognition, and a range of emotional systems including fear, disgust, and jealousy. Barrett and Kurzban, 2006. The argument for this modular view of mind rests on three main points. The phi RST is that specialized modules work faster and more efficiently than a general purpose problem solver, they accept only certain kinds of input and are equipped with an algorithm that speedily generates a solution. Speed is of the essence in many situations of life and death, and these are the very situations on which natural selection operates most potently. A second point is what has become known as the frame problem. At any given moment in our lives our brains are assaulted by billions of bits of information. If an immediate decision is required, shall I run from this tiger or finish eating this apple, a general purpose mind would phi RST have to identify which of thousands of perceptual factors might be relevant to answering the question. Is the sky blue? Is the species of tiger relevant? Is the ripeness of the fruit important? The reason these options sound ridiculous is precisely because our evolved mind is already furnished with a module that has solved the frame problem for us, it has automatically sifted out these factors as irrelevant. Th. Is computational efficiency is nowhere better exemplified than in language acquisition Pinker, 1994, 1997. Babies acquire their native language in a couple of years. Yet to work out the rules underlying the grammatical structure of language in this period of time is impossible. The baby seems to arrive equipped with a program that directs it to correct linguistic constructions and allows meaning to be mapped to them. Finally, other bodily organs are not all purpose designs. Evolution appears to select for specify C function so that hearts pump blood, kidneys maintain water balance, and so on. Yet the massive modularity idea has proved controversial. It is relatively easy to accept that some lower-level brain functions are modular in the sense that they are sensitive to only certain inputs, encapsulated from other psychological processes, operate below conscious awareness, and automatically generate certain outputs. Boder, 1983. Vision is a classic example. We have conscious access only to the products of the visual system, not to its processes. We see the world effortlessly and automatically. The modularity of the system makes it resistant to conscious interference. Look around you now and try not to see your surroundings in three dimensions or in color. Emotional reactions have this same quality. When asked to eat a piece of fudge shaped to resemble feces, most people refuse because it is difficult to consciously override the automatic disgust module that has been so adaptive in our evolutionary past Rosen. 14. The Essential Woman, B-I-O-P-H-O-B-I-A and the Study of Sex Differences. Millman, and Nemiroff, 1986. But when we reach higher levels of cognition, can modularity still work? Cosmides 1989 believes that even something as apparently cognitively demanding as the ability to detect cheating on a social contract is a modular system. She asked subjects to choose which out of four pieces of information would be required to establish if a social rule was being broken underage drinking. The speed and success rate was much higher than when the same task was framed as a decision that could be solved only by the application of formal logic. Others are more skeptical. THEY go under the banner of dual process theorists Evans, 2008, McDonald, 2008, Stanovich, 2004. THEY argue for two evolved systems. THE reflexive system, sometimes more neutrally called System 1, is modular. It is unconscious, automatic, fast, requires little effort, and has a high capacity to process information. It is universal and does not depend on intelligence. Many evolutionary psychologists believe that this is an ancient system and one that we share with other species. The reflective system, system 2, is uniquely human, although elements of it can be seen in other primates. It is conscious, controlled, requires high effort, and has low capacity to process information. It is analytic, logical, and linked to language. The performance of this system is AF affected by individual differences in intelligence and working memory capacity. It is this system that allows us to play chess, and solve algebra problems, activities that are evolutionarily novel and hence for which we have no specify C modular adaptation. It provides the cognitive, imagination, that allows us to envision the future and to engage in conditional and hypothetical thinking. Th's reflective system has an inhibitory role also. 
it suppresses the automatic behavioral tendencies generated by the reflex of system. We restrain the reflex of tendency to lash out when angry, to yawn during a conversation, or to laugh when we see a friend's pratfall. When evolutionary psychology phi RST opened its doors, massive modularity was specified as an essential requirement of an evolutionary approach to be in Cosmides, 1992. Th is is no longer the case. But whether the evolution of the human mind culminated in a set of discrete modules or whether these were complemented by a high-level general problem solver, evolutionary psychologists do not doubt the human mind as an evolved organ. THIRD, evolutionary psychology does not conceive of the mind as a conscious FITNESS maximizing device. To appreciate this, the distinction between ultimate and proximate causes is crucial. Tinbergen, 1963. When we pose a, why? question about the causes of a behavior, there are at least two answers, both of them correct but in different ways. Why does a baby cry? At a proximate level, it cries to attract the attention of its caregiver. At an ultimate level it cries to increase its chances of survival and its future reproductive success. The ultimate. Evolutionary psychology 15. Causes of behavior are evolutionary and the proximate causes are the immediate mechanisms by which this larger goal is achieved. THSA mechanisms are adaptations that evolved incrementally over evolutionary time because individuals who possessed them, a baby who cried when hungry or endangered, survived more often than those who did not. THSA adaptations mean that animals, including ourselves, do not need to be conscious of the grand evolutionary picture because lower level adaptations will automatically keep our actions on the right evolutionary path. Hunger makes us want to eat. Pain makes us avoid its source. Physical attraction makes us want sex. We have emotional responses that trigger evolutionarily appropriate tendencies to approach and avoid stimuli. Understanding the function of these adaptations and how they work is the focus of much evolutionary psychology. It is also what distinguishes evolutionary psychology from its sister discipline of behavioral ecology, sometimes called Darwinian anthropology, Smith, Borgerhoff Mulder, and Hill, 2001, Tubi and Cosmides, 1990A. Behavioral ecologists focus on the way in which contemporary human communities optimize their interaction with others and their environment. THIR subjects are usually peoples whose way of life corresponds to earlier human subsistence patterns, hunter-gatherers, pastoralists, and agriculturalists. For example, optimal foraging theory is concerned with the net gain or loss in calories that are contingent on different organization of foraging. THIR measure of phi TNESS of a community's strategy is the extent to which it corresponds to statistical models of the most efficient means of calorie replenishment. Behavioral ecologists have been characterized as baby counters, Betzig, 1998. TH. EY examine which modes of kin and community organizations result in the highest yield of surviving children. The assumption is that humans do whatever they can to maximize their survival and success, and this entails the usually unspoken presumption that the mind is an all-purpose phi TNESS maximizing device designed to operate adaptively in any environment in which it phi NDS itself. Th's focus on the optimization of current behavior is one way in which behavioral ecology differs from evolutionary psychology. Evolutionary psychology argues that much present behavior is a function of the past adaptive success of genetically encoded mental modules. Adaptiveness is a property of the past because that is where selection occurred. To know if a current behavior is adaptive we would have to return in several hundred thousand years, phi nd wet traits had gone to phi exation, and trace the reproductive success of humans who had the necessary rudimentary adaptation compared to those who did not. Because the current environment differs from the one in which we evolved, it is quite possible that an adaptation is not currently adaptive. Men's fascination, some might say obsession, with sex stood them in good stead to take advantage of. 16. The Essential Woman, B-I-O-P-H-O-B-I-A and the Study of Sex Differences Unexpected Mating Opportunities in Ancestral Times Recently this adaptation has been exploited by 24-hour internet pornography which not only threatens to undermine work productivity but may be creating a new form of behavioral addiction, Robinson, 2011. Our preference for fat and sugar was useful at a time when meat and berries were nutritious and rare. THEY are currently responsible for obesity and heart disease in an environment where sources are too plentiful. Indeed our appetite for sugar is so strong that, rather than simply refusing it, we go to extraordinary lengths to develop chemicals that mimic the taste while removing the calories. The question for any putative adaptation is, what did it do for us back then? 
Although we can and do surmise on the apparent mismatches between evolved adaptations and current environments Crawford. 1998 We cannot meaningfully speak of adaptations in the making until the unknown future environment has a chance to make its genetic selection. But the rise of dual process theory brings evolutionary psychology and behavioral ecology much closer. As evolutionary psychologists recognize the evolution of the higher order and very human process of problem solving, they approach the territory of behavioral ecologists. The advantage of our creative intelligence is that it allows online adaptation to short-term FL actuations in our environment. We can imagine the different futures to which our current actions might lead and we adjust our behavior accordingly. We have become what Daniel Dennett 1997 calls, Popperian creatures, in honor of the philosopher Karl Popper, because foresight means that our hypotheses can die in our stead. If a woman must make a decision as to the best foraging strategy, she can formulate the problem food located at a minimum of 2 kilometers away, generate a number of possible solutions the net utilities of various permutations of traveling alone, carrying the baby, leaving an older child at camp, traveling early before the sun gets hot, relying on leftovers from relatives, and select the most successful strategy. Now the chief difference between evolutionary psychologists and behavioral ecologists is reduced to the difference between explanations of individual minds and descriptions of group-level behavior. Evolutionary psychologists want to explain what mental processes are needed for decision-making and how such mechanisms evolved. Behavioral ecologists gather descriptive data from the phi eld about how the ecology or social environment AFFECTS birth spacing, or longevity, or patrilocality. Th. There is more and more scope for close cooperation between the two approaches. Lastly, evolutionary psychology is chiefly why concerned with species typical adaptations. It seeks to explain the emotions, algorithms, and strategies that are common and central to all human experience, even though their behavioral manifestation may vary from one culture to the next and though they may only be activated given appropriate environmental input. Th is sets it apart from Evolutionary Psychology 17 Behavior genetics. Behavioral geneticists are engaged in a statistical attempt to explain differences between people in a population with respect to a given psychological trait. Using adoption and twin studies, they attempt to phi-t mathematical models that distribute the variance in a trait to environmental and genetic sources. The whole enterprise depends essentially on the presence of variance. But for species-typical traits, no variance exists. Because we have all evolved to have one heart and two lungs, there is no variability on this attribute genetic abnormality aside. The trait has gone to phi exation and falls out of the purview of behavior genetics. The very existence of a heritable component for any trait tells us that it has not reached phi exation and is not possessed uniformly by every human being. Evolutionary psychologists are not uninterested in variability, and in Chapter 8 I shall have more to say on this, but to see the big picture of evolution we must dwell not on the noise but on the signal, those traits that were acted upon by selection to the point that they came to characterize the whole species. We need a crucial caveat, however, when we talk of universality. Humans come in two distinct morphs, women and men, differentiated by the size of the gametes that they contribute to sexual reproduction. The bulk of selection pressures, disease, predators, famine, AF affected both sexes equally and no sex differences are expected in psychological mechanisms that allow us to cope with these threats. The majority of traits that were advantageous are passed on by sexual recombination to both daughters and sons regardless of whether they were contributed by the mother or the father. Later in the book this statement will have to be complicated by the discussion of genomic imprinting, a process by which the expression of some traits depends upon the parent that contributes.